Mr. Smith goes to Washington. But unlike Mr. Smith, Mr. Zappa's fight to keep government out of the arts is very real. Let's have a nice welcome, please, for Frank Zappa. Good to see you again. Frank, what was it like uh, testifying in front of the Senate? <clears throat> Not very pleasant, really. No? Yeah. Why? Well, um, I don't know whether you, a lot of people don't pay attention to politics anymore. They just got bored with it. But those people are really quite arrogant. I mean, they, you're sitting, like, how far away from them? Are you well, like... let's see. If this was uh, that Senate hearing, I would be at a table right here. And that whole area right in there would be with 50 still photographers. And then right about where you're sitting, there was a circle of senators who kept walking in and out and talking during the testimony. You know, in other words, you're trying to make your points, right, considered points, and yeah. you may be talking to one guy, but there's a lot of hubbub and stuff in the background. Well, usually what they do is um, they come into the hearing room, but they have boats on the Senate floor. So they get up and they leave, and uh, if they have something they don't want to hear, they'll just get up and walk out. And while I was reading my testimony, uh, because I did a five-page prepared statement that was put in the congressional record. And they made me send them a hundred copies of it in advance. So they had already read it. So while I'm reading it, they uh, weren't paying any attention. So it's like a formality. Yeah. Well, we did see a lot of the hearings on TV. But actually, in, in your mind's camera, what do you remember that did not get on television? Well, the thing that most people saw of the hearing on television was Senator Slade Gorton from Washington State telling me that I didn't know anything about the First Amendment. That's the main thing that got carried. CNN ran it about 12 times that day. But the most important thing that was said at the hearing, I feel, was Senator Exxon, who is from Nebraska, who uh, Dee Snyder and, and myself were in the back room at the time he said this. We were listening on a loudspeaker. He was the only guy there who had the nerve to say, what is the reason for these hearings? And that, did that go on the air? I don't think that went out on the, on the news at all. Hmm. And, you know, as soon as he said that, uh, Dee and I were back there going, yeah, cheer, cheer. Was, and, was there one thing that happened that made you laugh during this thing? I mean, yeah. laugh on the inside, kind of? <laughs> well, you know, you want to laugh, but then again, you realize these people are getting paid to do that. And uh, it means that also that somebody was dumb enough to vote for him to send them there to do that. <laughs> so what do you think, actually, about the way the whole thing got resolved with the little label on the, on the record album? Well, um, considering what the, when this is going to air, uh, I've... The resolution between the RIAA and the PMRC is hollow. It doesn't really mean anything. It's unenforceable. It's full of loopholes. You can't really make anybody do anything based on what they've agreed on. First of all, the RIAA does not represent artists. It represents record company owners, and not even all record company owners. So it's, it's an agreement between a few people and a few other people, but it doesn't really it's cover not the whole be industry. Enforced, but they were celebrating that victory. Anyway, let's take a break now. We'll come back and talk a little more with Frank and the whole crew. Frankie Pace wants to ask some questions. We'll oh, be good. back right after this. <laughs> look like that, Frank Zappi? Didn't everyone? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, man! <laughs> well, anyway, I don't want to let the whole show go by without asking what you're into now. What, you know, the, the hearings are over. What are you working on? Mm -hmm. I don't know whether the hearings really are over, but there's an album that's coming out called Frank Zappa Meets the Mothers of Prevention, and there's a piece on there called Porn Wars, which is 12 minutes long. It's one of the ugliest things you've ever heard in your life. <laughs> it's going to get a lot of, of airtime, right? right? It won't get any airtime at all, but I think that if you, you should hear it at least once. Now, why do you make a record that won't get any airtime at all? Well, I don't make records just to suit the radio. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's it. Uh, hey, Mom. Uh, Frankie and I are going to get together and tell some jokes that don't suit television either. So. <laughs>